Hey everyone, welcome back. And this is my review of Servant X Service Episode um, 3. And if there's a title, I will find it. Or if I can find the title. Alright, it's Don't Neglect the Safety of You or Your work Workplace. Alright, so there's five parts of this episode that I want to talk about before I get into get the, whole, to the whole review portion of this uh, video. The first part is the introduction in which um, try to find the names here Said a, alright. Um, what was that? So the first part basically, basically the introduction. Of the no, wait, no, it's not Hasebe. What, what am I talking about? Um, it, it, um, Ichimiya's younger sister Toko. She returns to the office, and you know we get some more comedy in which she constantly protests that she basically contradict contradictory at this point. Basically, a hypocrite at this point, um, in in the sense that she claims that blatantly claims that he that that her brother's a reliable brother because he took care of her from a young age, but he's still a bad brother. I don't know if you'd call that hypocrisy or just living in denial or refusing to admit to other people that she loves her brother. I don't know, but if it's the latter, then she's really sucking at it, okay. Then the uh, sec second half was a bit more com comedy in which um, Lucy's... Uh, bra strap breaks, and she tries to hide it, however, everyone, well, every one of her co-workers, anyway, including her boss, realizes it. And everyone tries to tell her, but they just can't seem to get it out until uh, Hasebe comes along and tells her to go home. Claims that she looks sick and that she should change her clothes and get some rest. And she does. He saves the day. <laughs> Um, also, uh, Hasebe actually has a really pr a pretty sensible part in this episode, which I'll get to later on. Uh, part three is the next, basically the next day when she goes back and claiming that she actually was sick and she feels much better now, which is odd. Um, all right, and that part's pretty short. And now I'm going to talk about uh, Hasebe's role in this episode because it's spread out through all five parts pretty much. But Hasebe, even though he's a very good at goofing off, obviously. He appears to be this, a, still a really good person in the sense that he has all these skills like being able to work with children and knowing sign language for people who can't speak and thus communicate solely with sign language. Alright. And so I guess Lucy doesn't despise him as much as she, she originally did. Even if she, the, uh, he, if she originally did, I mean, I'm not sure if she actually despised him before or just was annoyed by him, but and she's still annoyed by him definitely, but I think a lot less now when she, cause she's learning what kind of person he really is, you know, despite the fact, you know, that's not like fake or anything, it's actually happening, he's great at slacking off. Alright, so that was um, part three. Then part four was basically Lucy's and uh, Hasebe's extended reactions with one another. Um, there's two main things that happen, which they meet at the library, and push comes to the shove, they end up going out to eat with one another. And then th they meet at the workplace again in like a storage place, I guess it kind of is, I think. Um, and the thunder and lightning is going on outside, and there's these huge windows there, and I guess Lucy seemingly afraid of light thunder and lightning or something, and so Hasebe gives him his, gives her his iPod to borrow to, so she can listen to music, hide listening to music, and 
not listen to us when they remind me. She she four points out a height a hiding spot that he knows of that she can hide at and no one will see her. Which I guess is the one that he uses, so yeah. <laughs> I guess it means he better not ever piss truly piss her off because now she knows where to find him. Um and so that was part four. I uh, and And then part five was basically the conclusion in which we learned about the, the main thing in part in, in the or part five. The main thing in the fifth and final part of this episode is um, we learning about Hasebe's uh, sign language skills, you know, and Lucy asked for for all that she's done for her Lucy asks if there's any way she can repay the favor and gazing at his breast uh, at her breasts he asks for her cup size and she gives it to him as well despite the fact that he thought it would be impossible because she thought he she'd never tell she did and apparently it's somewhere past the I'm not sure he starts counting and then she's tell them to stop counting and runs away. Um, so and that was basically the episode. It's getting a lot better than it was in episode one. Because episode one was just subpar at best, but it's actually getting pretty funny now. Um do have a few concerns though. First off, what's with that fucking strand of hair on top of Lucy's head? It's kind of distracting. I mean whenever she gets happy it wags kind of like a dog with its tail. It's just weird. <sighs> And of course, I it really is. I also love that that Lucy seems, to, for the most part, seems to be completely incapable of telling sexual harassment. All right. At one point, Hasebe even says, you know, say something or it's not considered sexual per or uh, so, so, so it's not considered sexual harassment. And then their senpai, I forget his name. Uh, what? Screw that. I'm going to find his name just a second here. Um, Taishi said, says you idiot, you know, that it's due to sexual harassment, which it kind of is. Um, so, yeah. But, overall, I did enjoy this episode. Alright, I thought it was very good, and I like that the series th is picking up from the kind of a drag of a first episode, you know. So yeah. Anyways, overall, I hope you enjoyed this review, guys. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.